What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Rotary Craft. And today guys, we're going to be jumping into Reactor Craft, doing some of the basic uranium processing, which I think is going to be a lot of fun and pretty interesting. One thing I want to note though is there are a couple prerequisites for this uh, that are going to be involving Rotary Craft stuff that we've already done in this series, but I want to let you know that you can't just jump into Reactor Craft. You are going to have to do a little bit with Rotary Craft first. So a lot of the things we're going to be using today are going to be things like the micro turbine that we've worked with before, uh, the blast glass, which we got using the pulse jet furnace, so you're going to need that, uh, a lot of that stuff, and then we're going to be using, you know, bedrock gears, which means you're going to need the bedrock breaker, so all that good stuff. Then we can actually get into the reactor craft uranium processing. Now, not only are you going to need all these prerequisites, but you're also going to need to do a lot of mining or take a trip to the end because we're going to need to get pitch blend and the easiest way I'd say to get pitch blend is to go to the end. I did a little bit of a tricky trip where you go into the end and send the stuff back without actually uh, having to kill the ender dragon because I thought you know what if we want to test out some of the weaponry we could do that with the ender dragon but I have brought some of the pitch blend back I do have a little bit more in this ender chest here but the basic idea is you want to get that pitch blend uh, which can be found uh, under the mushroom islands I think uh, it can be found in the end it's a lot more prevalent there it can be found in the twilight forest pretty much stuff like that but it's it's very rare so you want to process it in the extractor okay so now that we've covered how to actually get the pitch blend how to process it and all that good stuff we can get into the crafting now I want to say that getting the pitch blend is pretty much the most annoying part the rest of this is actually surprisingly easy assuming you've done all the rotary craft prerequisites that I mentioned before so we're gonna get out most of the stuff's already crafted but we are going to take out the blast glass the mixer liquid pipes all this stuff over here pretty much is what we're gonna be crafting with so we do need to make some different pipes because we are going to be working with gas today so to make these gas ducts which are essentially the pipes that we're going to be using for gas you're going to need hardened clay and glass so those are pretty easy to make the next thing that we're going to be making is going to be the uh isotope centrifuge now this is going to separate the uranium that we want to make fuel from the worst uranium i believe it's enriched uranium is what we want uh and then it's a little bit less common to get that but you're gonna need a little bit of bedrock for this uh, to make the bedrock alloy ingots. The rest of it's relatively easy, just the gear units, some steel and some base panels. So we have the isotope centrifuge, which is what we're going to be powering using the 16 to one bedrock gearbox and the uh, micro turbine. And then along with that, we're gonna be making the, uh, oh gosh, I can't even think of the name of it. If we go to the obsidian, you can look at uses for obsidian and we can go over to where is it? Blast glass uses for this. Go over to the obsidian tank, which is what I was making before. So the uranium processor, which is what I, I guess I mentioned earlier, we're going to be processing uranium. This is what's going to give us the gas. So we're going to need three obsidian tanks, uh, two liquid pipes, and a mixer. So it's relatively easy to make. Now, I don't know if the obsidian tanks, no, in case we don't make them in here, we got to make those in the other crafting bench. So three of those. I did have to go back and process one more obsidian because I only had made 23 last time we were working with it. But now we can hop back over here. We can go to the uses for this. And there we go. So the uranium processor. Now, we do have a lot of other stuff in here, such as DC electric engines, shaft junction, and pump, because you do need a steady supply of water. So that's what this is all for. We have the bedrock gearbox, the micro turbine with a fresh reservoir, and the engine control unit and fuel line so that we can get the micro turbine running to actually get the center view to function. Then I have a... Uh, bevel gear and liquid pipes and we're just gonna leave the dynamometer in there because we don't actually need that today the bevel gear is because the centrifuge is going to have to receive power from the bottom and the liquid pipes are just because we need to pipe liquid today so now we get to head downstairs and we're gonna be heading down one extra level today because I was running out of room on the previous level and I didn't want to keep loading it up so now we're down here relatively small room because it's not going to take up much room today i do plan on expanding this which is why i haven't made this wall into the stone brick yet because we're going to expand it this way and i guess eventually we're going to expand it this way uh but the reason we come down so far is because there's a lot of stuff going on below the floor upstairs you can see this nether rack is right there we do kind of have to leave that there i can't really get rid of it but we're going to start i guess right over here in this corner and we can line it on this wall so we're going to start with the water processing as usual, and it seems we've run into some fluorite down here. Uh, you know what? I I can mine this right now. It should have some room in our inventory. The copper ore is just going to sit there. We'll, we'll leave it there for now because I don't have room in my inventory for it. And I'm going to get rid of this dirt, replace it with stone because this would bother me so much. 
and while I'm setting this up I guess I can discuss uh, we just hit 4,000 subscribers which is amazing guys I was contemplating uh, contemplating making a video to say thank you to you guys for all the amazing support that you've given me oh my gosh I messed this up it needs to be over here uh, but I was contemplating making a video for that but uh, I decided you know what we'll wait until 5,000 subscribers but I did want to say thank you to you guys because it has been amazing uh, recently with the surviving with series getting such great support Oh my gosh, I gotta go with cobble there because I don't have any more stone left on me. So I just wanted to say thank you briefly. I wanted to catch all you guys before you do tune out. I know a lot of you guys don't watch until the end, so I wanted to make sure I, I caught you guys before that. Okay, so now we need to do the typical setup here. A little bit of finagling around, and we can wrench this into place. Both of these should be good. We can flip them on right now because why not turn them on already? Get the shaft junction out. I have so many different transmission pieces in my inventory that I'm getting them mixed up. And get the pump out. There we go. And now we can take the liquid pipe and pretty much pipe it into the uranium processor from any side. So when we throw this down, there's a couple things we want to note. I'm going to throw it down like this, and I'll, I'll mention why later. So you can see that this thing is actually pretty cool. I don't know what that thing in chat was. I don't, I don't know what that's saying tried to access slot zero which is empty what what does that even mean guys I don't know what that means oh oh okay I get it now okay so there's a little bit of a bug here that I've noticed if we look at the uranium processor you should not be getting hydrofluoric acid without putting anything in here I believe you're supposed to put fluorite crystals in there to get hydrofluoric acid so uh, I think we can put these in there and it consumes them but it also goes without actually consuming them and I assume that's what that chat message is for because it goes every time this happens so that'll stop a little bit once this gets to being full I assume it'll fill up yeah okay so now it'll stop I assume that's a bug uh, I will try and submit that bug I guess because that's really not fair you should have to consume your fluorite crystals and if we throw them in there it you know you can throw them in there and they'll get consumed as you go but they won't actually get consumed if you throw them in now so I just got all this free hydrofluoric acid so a little bit of a bug but uh, fun fact about hydrofluoric acid it's actually a weak acid but it's extremely dangerous and is actually more dangerous than a lot of the strong acids so just one thing to note but you can see what I was saying before those chat messages popped up these have different tanks okay and you don't need to pump it into necessarily the right position for the water tank this thing could be facing directly at me right now and the hydrofluoric acid would be on the side with water and it would still be able to pump water in even though it's not pumping it into the correct side so the side doesn't matter when it comes to pumping water in but the side does matter when it comes to pumping the gas out so i'm going to throw this pitch blend in here and it should start going uh, it's a lot slower than getting the hydrofluoric acid but we're going to get the gaseous product which i believe is is it uranium fluorite i'm not sure it should be uf6 but uh, we're gonna be getting that and then that's why we're gonna be using these gas ducts and we're gonna transfer it to the isotope centrifuge and this is where we're gonna separate it into the two different types of uranium that we can have which like I mentioned before is going to be a lot less common than the one that we want if we go to uranium uh, we're gonna get a lot of depleted uranium dust and we're not always gonna get enriched uranium dust but we want the enriched uranium dust for later so uh, you can see that we start getting some uranium hexafluoride and I'm gonna leave these in there because I don't want to be cheating I don't want to you know get hydrofluoric acid without consuming some of my fluorite crystals you can use any color of these you want it really doesn't matter but we need to make sure we use the gas duct out the front that's the only side that matters uh, you can't pump it out of a different side and now we need to come over and throw down the isotope centrifuge which we're gonna put right here okay because we're gonna be putting power in the bottom of this and we're gonna put bevel gear right here which needs to go from south to up so that should be good and then we're gonna throw down a bedrock 16 to 1 gearbox which is gonna go right here and we're gonna turn this into acceleration mode yeah and then we're going to take out the micro turbine and we're gonna put that right back here we're gonna flip it over and I'm going to mine out this block and throw ooh iron nice I will get that later but we're gonna throw the engine control unit down below this so there we go and then we can put the fuel line down and I am going to have to go fill up a reservoir so I will actually get all this set and then we can hop back 
Okay, guys, so we are back. I'm just about to fill up the reservoir. I did go upstairs and grab the dynamometer. I made the executive decision that we are going to actually use this because I want to give you guys an accurate representation of what we're doing with the speed and torque of the micro turbine. This should be full. I had a lot of jet fuel in here, so we filled up the entire reservoir. We can grab that. That should give the micro turbine down here a ton of uh, runtime. So we're actually going to have to get rid of this stuff and move it over one because I want to put the dynamometer right back here so I have to move this over one so dynamometer if you didn't see the last couple episodes when I mentioned this this pretty much acts as a shaft it's just gonna transfer power and allow us to read what is going on with the power torque and speed on the screen and then we need to place down some stone brick instead of putting down some uh, cobblestone but then again we're gonna have to throw down the 16 to 1 bedrock gearbox and rotate it and switch its mode and then lastly we are going to have to get out the engine control unit and the micro turbine again and throw these down so engine control unit which we can look at the settings for so zero percent speed redstone operated nice and you know what i don't even think i have a lever on my person for that no i don't okay so i'll have to get one later but we're gonna throw out the micro turbine rotate that and get out our fuel line now, I was told before, and obviously I realized last episode, that you probably want to run the fuel line further away from the gas turbine, because then the items can get sucked in and make it explode, but it's perfectly fine near the micro turbine, as far as I'm aware, you're not going to have anything exploding from that, so we're going to put down the fuel line down here, and just put down the reservoir up here. You can see it starts running, and this thing starts spinning, so now what we need to do is get the gas duct actually running into the centrifuge. So, I want to show you guys a common mistake that's going to happen right now. Right here, you might think that this is putting it into the centrifuge. It's not. Gas ducts will hook up from the side of this, but it has to go in the top, which leads me to what we're going to talk about next in the uh, Reactor Craft book, which is going to be under the Processing tab, and then it's going to be under the Isotope Centrifuge. So, it uses very high rotational speed to separate the different isotopes of uranium. If you guys have ever used any type of centrifuge, it's pretty much just that you're using uh, the idea of it spinning very fast to separate different, uh, I guess you could call it, I, whenever I'm using it, it's when I'm separating a chemical from uh, something that's precipitating out of it. So, it pretty much will separate different substances. This is pretty much the same idea. You don't need a high torque. You can have an extremely low torque and you're just going to be using it to spin around really quick and separate different substances. Uh, so the latter is far less common due to the rarity of uranium-235. That's what I discussed earlier. You're going to get a lot of depleted, but you're not going to get much enriched uranium dust. And if we flip over to the requirements, you can see UF6 is input through the top, like I mentioned, even though it hooks up to the sides. The power is input through the bottom, which is why we use a bevel gear. And the minimum speed, there is no minimum power, there is no minimum torque. There's just minimum speed, which is 262,144 radians per second. So one thing to keep in mind is that you can pretty much take your uh, torque all the way down to one newton meter, which is what we're gonna do over here. So you can see right here, it is currently at one newton meter. Now this thing is charging up right now, so it's not actually gonna have this function yet, but we also need to put in the gas duct to get it up top. And it, whoa, look at the gas duct in my inventory. It looks fine here, but then in my inventory, it looks weird. It's like it's got white stuff in the center of it. Whitish, whitish blue stuff, I don't know. A lot of buggy stuff with reactor craft so far. Uh, but this is about halfway charged up right now. You can see the power and the speed is at one is it milliradians per second. Yeah, so it needs to get up to, it's going to eventually get up to two, uh, and that's going to allow this to function relatively quickly. But I guess what we can do now is throw down the gas ducts. Now this is going to allow it to fill up, and you can see it starts functioning because it does go over the needed speed, but it will allow it to go faster as this continues charging up. And you can see this is going to function for a really long time, which is why I do want to get a lever going down there. But if we watch this, you can see it's got a relatively decent sized internal tank. This blue uh, bar that's going down here is obviously indicating the process that is going on, which is about to finish. And it's not a super quick process, and I doubt we're going to get any of the... Yeah, so we only got depleted uranium dust, no enriched uranium dust, unfortunately. Like the book mentioned and I mentioned, it is significantly more rare than you're going to get the depleted uranium dust. So I'm going to allow this to continue processing. And uh, this whole setup over here is 
it consumes a good amount of this pitch blend. So it really is important, I think, that you get to the end to get to actually harvest this. Now, eventually I will put out a world download for this world, but if you guys are following along using the same seed and you're in the same area, I do have a waypoint over there that is a decent distance away. I went and killed a bunch of endermen, which is how I made the ender chest. It's how I found the way to the end portal. It's how I filled in the end portal, all that good stuff. I spent most of my time off camera doing the bedrock dust gathering and killing endermen, but it is over in the south, I guess that'd be west, southwest direction. Uh, something like that it's in this direction leaving my base and uh, you can head over there you can find it pretty easily obviously you can use the uh, ender eyes to actually find your way over there like I did but if you're playing along with the seed or you take the world download that is where it's going to be but I suggest going there because it's significantly easier to find pitch blend there and I again will try and submit the the bug that we have going on with this fluorite and hydrofluoric acid because it's a little bit broken and the chat message isn't fun. It doesn't look like we're getting it right now though, but I think what should happen, let's let's do some testing. Let's do some testing really quick. So I think what should happen is if we take stuff out of there, we should get the chat message whenever it needs to make more. It should give us the chat message when it needs to make more for this, right? Yeah, okay, so I think we only get the chat message if we open up, yeah, so we should only get the chat message when there's no fluorite here. So you shouldn't get it if there's fluorite here because I assume it's trying to find what is supposed to be in here and if it doesn't find it you get the error message in chat but if it does find it then you have no issue at all so if you get annoyed by the chat message just put the fluorite crystals in there and I will submit the bug again but that is gonna be it for today guys the start of reactor craft if there's anything specific you want to see with reactor craft feel free to let me know otherwise I'm just gonna do the logical progression through it but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did enjoy it or find it informative in any way feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot and I will talk to you guys later